Hello, welcome to another STAT 510 video. Um, this video will serve one very specific purpose, which is that we are going to prove the central limit theorem. Okay, so we should probably talk about, oh, we should probably talk about uh, first again, what the central limit theorem is, if we're gonna prove it, we talked about it in the last video, but just as a refresher, um, we have random variables x1 through xn that are iid uh, with some mean, what we'll call mu and finite variance sigma squared. Um, then if we perform this sort of transformation of the sample mean to sort of standardize it, um, that quantity that we call z sub n converges in distribution to standard normal. And again, this is um, pretty remarkable considering that we have very minimal conditions on what potential distributions the xi could have, but we're not saying it has to be any particular distribution, but they all end up converging in distribution to standard normal. Again, provided it meets the conditions. Okay, so a few things we're gonna need along the way here. First, the notion of a moment generating function. Uh, next, um, we have this lemma here that tells us if we have random variables, uh, Z1 through Zn uh, with um, moment generating functions indexed by N there, um, if those moment generating functions converge to the moment generating function of this other random variable z, well then that sequence of random variables converges in distribution to uh, that random variable z. So that will be um, a useful piece of information. I think that's the only new thing we need along the way here. Okay, um, some other things we'll need, which we've already seen, are these two properties of moment generating functions. That is what happens if you do an ax plus b type transformation to them and what happens if you add up a bunch of independent random variables, what is, their, what is the new momentary function of that summation? Um, so we've seen that before, but we're gonna use that here. Um, another very important thing is uh, this notion here that um, if you have two random variables, they both have the same momentary function, then uh, they are equal in distribution. Not necessarily equal, but we care about convergence and distribution here, so we really only care about the distributions of the two random variables. Okay, so now actually getting into the proof. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna define a new set of random variables, y sub i, which are basically just standardizing the x sub i's. You know, that is uh, the expected value of each y i is zero, and the variance of each uh, yi is one. Okay, now if we add up all those random variables and divide by square root of n, that actually gives us exactly z sub n. So uh, this um, quantity here, um, it is exactly uh, equivalent to this quantity here. It just, it's written in a different way because it's gonna help us out uh, in a second. Okay. Um, right. Okay. So, um, and then we're going to say, uh, this, this, this quantity here is a momentary function of Y I and just to note that the Y I are also I I D, uh, because the X I were I I D and we perform the same transformation to all of them. Okay. So now a couple things. So first of all, uh, the momentary function of the sum of the Y I's is because they're IID, the product of each individual momentary function of the YIs. So in other words, it's um, momentary function times momentary function times momentary function, and it's all the same momentary function. So it's just that momentary function raised to the nth power. So uh, again, we were basically applying uh, property two here to um, this uh, sum of YI that we have here. Okay, so now, Zn is just one over square root of n times some of yi's. So that would be like doing a times x plus b where b is zero and a is one over square root of n. So um, we can also very easily get the moment generating function of z sub n, which is what we see here. Uh, and I'm just gonna kind of give this a new name. I'm gonna do sort of a squiggle sub n of t uh, is the, that'll be the moment generating function of z sub n. Okay, um, a quick note here. So uh, note that 
Um, so thinking back to this moment during function here of the yi's, if we take a derivative of it and plug in zero, that'll get us the expected value of y sub i, which is zero. And if we take two derivatives and plug in zero, well, that gets us the expected value of y i squared, but because their means are zero, that's actually the variance of y sub i, which is one, and that'll come in handy in a second. Okay, so basically all we've done so far is we have um, sort of um, defined these y sub i's, talked about their momentary functions, uh, rewrote z sub n as a function of these y sub i's, and then found the moment generating function uh, of the sum of the yi's and z sub n. Okay, so, and again, ultimately what we wanna show is now as uh, n goes to infinity, z sub n converges to a standard normal, but so what we really wanna look at is what happens to the moment generating function of z sub n as n goes to infinity. Okay, so that's where we're going now. Okay. So uh, the first thing I want to do is we want to look at the moment generating function of y. And we want to uh, tailor expand this thing. So this is going to be the moment generating function at 0 plus t times uh, the derivative of the moment generating function at 0 plus t squared over 2 factorial times moment generating function, uh, second derivative uh, at zero plus t cubed over three factorial, triple derivative at zero and so on and so forth. Um, except we should note a few things. So um, I should move myself to, uh, I don't know if we, I don't know if we said this anywhere and if we didn't, you should prove or prove or convince yourself of this. Uh, if you have a moment during a function, you plug in zero, you get back one. Um, that should be somewhat clear by the definition, like plug in t is zero to the definition and you'll see what happens. Um, okay, and we said that um, if we take a derivative and plug in zero, that is the mean, which is zero. So this second term is zero. Uh, this next term, uh, the second derivative with zero plugged in, that is one according to what we did here. So this is plus t squared over two. Uh, and then the next term we haven't sort of done anything interesting to. Okay. So now we wanna look at uh, the moment generating function of z sub n. Remember this 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 notationally is um, the moment generating function of z sub n. So this is the one we're, we're truly interested in. So this is the moment generating function of y, um, but with some modifications. Okay, so now we just need to kind of plug in. So this is going to be, see if I can write this correctly. This is one plus uh, t squared over two n, because we're plugging t over square root of n into t squared. Yeah, so that's right. Um, so this is then plus t cubed over, let's see, it'll be three factorial times n to the three halves something like this, and then plus a bunch of other terms, all to the nth power. Okay, making progress. So now what I wanna do is, um, so this is one of those things where, to me, as a person who's not very good at math, I mean, first of all, the, the last few steps, it seems like magic that I knew to do these. This next one, it really, to me, feels a little bit like magic, but I want we see that I, I kinda wanna pull out an n here uh, in a certain way. Um, so what I'm gonna do is something like this. So I'm gonna do one plus, so of all these other terms, I'm gonna pull out 
and n. So what does that leave us with? So this would be t squared over two plus t cubed over three factorial. And then what would it be uh, n to the one half? Uh, okay, something like that. My bracket here doesn't look good anymore. It should be bigger. I don't like that bracket. Okay, like that. Okay, so now I need to pause for a moment and say, just a, a, a note here, that if you have a sequence a sub n that goes to a as n goes to infinity, then one plus a sub n over n, this quantity to the nth power goes to e to the a. Would I would have would I have expected you to know that off the top of your head? Maybe if I replaced uh, a a sub n with a, but maybe not this exact thing. But now you know it. Okay. So what does that tell us then? Well, then finally, this whole quantity here. So when we let n go to infinity here, uh, the the denominator. Uh, We'll go to t squared over two. So we get e to the t squared over two. And what is this but the MGF of a normal zero comma one random variable. So all we have to do now is sort of point and wave our hands at this slide and then I can make uh, sort of one new slide and I can say thus, uh, Z sub N converges in distribution to Z and that completes the proof. Okay, so um, hopefully um, one, you better understand the central limit theorem, two, you could potentially recreate a proof of the central limit theorem, but three, really um, hopefully that shows you how um, moment generating functions uh, can be a very useful tool for uh, proving that say two things have the same distribution. Okay, so as always, if you made it to the end of the video, good job, and I will see you in the next one.